So, <clears throat> is the Oroville uh, Dam a breach ready to fall? Is it really uh, just the spillway? Is it really just the emergency uh, area that is being inundated or that is the problem because of uh, because of this hole that they're talking about and or is it really more about the pressure and the weight that is coming into that lake? See, you don't hear anybody in the news or anybody in the uh, as far as the engineers, you don't hear anybody mentioning the fact that there is trillions of gallons of water getting ready to come down from the mountains. You don't hear them talking about the fact that there's going to be rain for the next seven to ten days. That's what I find interesting about, you know, the United States. Um, the incompetence is just not, it's mind numbing. It's just, it really is. And you just look at, look at New Orleans. Look at the incompetence of our country. We had more aid to the north, uh, to the tsunami or to the uh, devastation in Asia than we did to our own people a week earlier in, in New Orleans. We ended up getting more aid and more help out to the Asia than we did to our own people. It's amazing to me. Nobody is talking about, as they scramble and as they get the sandbags and as they're doing all this, and nobody's mentioning the fact, oh, well, they say the, the lake's going down and, you know, there's no spillover and... But nobody's mentioning the fact that there is trillion, at least, you know, just, it, let's just say at least a trillion gallon, gallons of water in the mountains. That right now in California, as we speak, it's, seven, it's in the high 70s, people. I think somebody's not telling somebody something. I think that they don't want to panic the people. I think they want to get all the people out of there. And you say, well, Brother Joseph, why do you want to panic the people? Well, sometimes panic is a good idea if you don't pray. You know, if you're not a person of prayer, sometimes it takes panic to get people moving. But I don't think that they are telling people the scale of this, the magnitude of this. And they're trying to get everybody out of there. And then it, after it collapses, you know, they're going to look like the heroes because they got everybody out of there in time. But I really believe, I mean, those, you know, I don't think those people are going back to their homes. And I'm not saying at this point that without question, emphatically, I'm not saying without question that this wasn't done, you know, purposely by man with explosives or something. What I'm saying, though, is that the Illuminati like to take something bad and use it. Right? They like to take a bad situation and use it for their purpose. And it makes me wonder if that's not what they're doing with this situation. Like they did with New Orleans. Like they did with Boston. They didn't have to. Look, when, when the Boston bombing took place, they didn't have to evacuate all those people. They didn't ha or not evacuate, but they didn't have to do house arrest to all those people for two teenage boys, for two young men. Are you listening? 
they use these opportunities for new world order scenarios. That's what they do. To have on, uh, live on, uh, you know, on hand training. Where, where, you know, where are you going to get your better training? You're not going to get any better training than in the real thing, right? But see, they put people's lives in danger because they want to turn uh, things into scenarios where they can use them for their training. Because they could have warned these people far before they did. Instead of making these people panic even more. And, you know, this is my thinking. Why didn't they tell the people long before they did? Because from my understanding, they knew about this back years ago when it first started. See, I was saying in the last message, I said, well, you know, how come they didn't say anything when it was smaller? Well, I didn't realize, folks, I went back, did some research, and I didn't realize that they knew about this back in 2008. And there is pictures with the trucks up there. Back in 2008, on the, on the emergency uh, spillway, they knew that there was a problem there. And, you know, the way that we are in America, they just played it down. Oh, this is not so bad. Or It's, you know, they got complacent, maybe, and lazy in thinking, well, you know, we haven't used it in 50 years. We haven't used it in 50 years. So I don't think that this whole thing is just a matter of, you know, they they possibly went in there and blew it up and they're trying to sabotage. That's why when I did the video or did the message, I said sabotage with a question mark. Is it a sabotage? Because I don't know myself. But it's not unlike, it's not unlike the Illuminati to sabotage things. But, you know, you got to listen to the leaders of this Illuminati that, you know, these leaders, these elites that say, you know, what we need is the right crisis. Right? Then we, when, then we should have world, world government. So, you've got a crisis in the Middle East. You've got a crisis going on in the United States inwardly, you know, as far as this. There, there's other things going on in the United States right now with Donald Trump becoming president and the protesting and all the... So is it more of a perfect storm that's culminating? More than a perfect storm that they're calling Oroville a perfect storm right now, saying water's coming from all these different areas, the mountains and all these different places. I just don't see that the real threat is being assessed. That's what I don't see. That bothers me. And, and it doesn't just be, have to be Oroville. I just noticed that man tends to dumb things down, play things down. You saw, for eight years, you saw Obama play the threat down, right? Well, look at 9-11. They knew far, bef- far before the attack took place on, a, on the Twin Towers, they knew the threat was there, and they played that down. In fact, they told the radio tower to play it down. Stand down. Yeah, stand down. I'm going to read a few scriptures to you. And you tell me if this is not prophetic. Tell, tell me if this is not prophetic, people. Isaiah chapter 30 beginning with verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, 
and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came from Hanes. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be a help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. Now, let's just skip down to a little bit here. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this. Their strength is to sit still. Their strength is to sit still. Isn't that what we do? That's what we do in the United States. We just sit still and do nothing. Now they're scrambling to put sandbags and stuff up there. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. Now listen to this. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers or to the prophets, see not. Well, I guess that the seers are the ones that are the watchtowers. And to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because you despise this word, and trust in oppression, and perverseness, and stay thereon, therefore this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall. Are you hearing this, folks? Swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Well, we haven't had that much rain here in over 50 years. Within 15 hours, folks, trillions of gallons of water was dropped. But you never they never mentioned it in, in the weather report. They played that down. Not to mention, they've not even declared a state of emergency right now over this situation. Donald Trump has not even made a comment about it. Sound like somebody you know? The previous boss? So, folks, is the Oroville Dam, which is the tallest dam in the United States... A breach ready to fall. Is, oh, now I feel the Spirit of the Lord. Is the small breach in the spillway the warning something worse is on its way? If they are pumping over a hundred thousand gallons. I think either a minute or a second. I think maybe it's a minute. Maybe might be a, yeah, I guess it's a minute. 100,000 gallons of water out of that lake. And they're still having trouble getting the lake down. What in the world are they going to do when 10 days of rain comes and then the snow begins to melt even more in the mountains? Do they really have the integrity in that dam to hold back that kind of power? Is this a breach ready to fall? Is the integrity of the dam really going to hold back that kind of weight. And I'm not saying that this is in the Bible as this is about Oroville. What I'm saying is, this is prophetic. And there's more breaches ready to fall. That's not, that's not the only breach that's ready to fall, people. There's other areas that are getting ready to fall, too. There's a huge breach right now, in the security of this country. 
There's a lot of breaches, a lot of gaps. Are you listening? You think by Donald Trump building a wall between us and Mexico is going to make us safer? That's a joke. What we need is a wall between us and the Federal Reserve. We need a wall between us and the communists. Amen. I don't think that the weather guys and the you know the meteorologists and the uh, the engineers and all those that get together and the water council and all these people getting together I don't think they're really telling us the magnitude of this thing I really don't I really do not believe they're telling the magnitude of this thing and it's very possible that if that dam was to break, that this would be catastrophic for California. You know, we've been talking about a tsunami coming in from the ocean, from the sea, right? For California. Talking about earthquakes. And yet, all this time, all it could take is a breach in a dam. Not being able to, maybe God is saying to the United States of America, your integrity, your character, it's not going to withstand. Maybe God is saying to the, the, those in our, in our country that think they're so intelligent. You know, like when the captain was asked on the, uh, on the Titanic, If, you know, the Titanic could sink and the captain looked at the person and said, God himself couldn't sink this ship. Just a little while later, it hits an iceberg. God didn't even move. He just let that man go on in his pride, thinking he knew more than God. Is the United States in a lot of ways like that captain of the Titanic? Is the United States like the Titanic? We don't even see danger looming just ahead. All the other ships never got hit by the iceberg, only the Titanic. You've heard the story about the the word coming to the captain of the ship, turn your ship so many degrees. And then the captain would say to the person on the radio, you turn your ship. And this was a naval ship that was saying to the other voice. And this went on for some time. Finally, the captain of the Navy finally uh, said who he was. And the other voice came back saying, this is the lighthouse. (laughs) Are we in that scenario, brothers and sisters, where the United States is that arrogant to speak to, to that voice on the other end? You move, you know. God's voice comes back. This is God. Hallelujah. You move. You make a move. We're in trouble, people. We th- this is just the beginning. Oroville is just the beginning. And really Oroville's not the beginning. We've already had a beginning, right? 9/11. These breaches ready to fall are just, they're just going to fall like the dominoes. One right after another. They're coming. The United States is going to receive blow after blow after blow. 
In all of this, God is trying to get America to come to its knees and repent. That's what this is all about. America is like a Nineveh. And God will keep allowing blow after blow. But this country says, oh, we are resilient. We'll build again. Another blow comes. Well, you can't knock us down. We're going to get back up. That's the mentality of the United States, right? And all the time, God is not looking for us to be resilient. He's not looking for us to bounce back. He's looking for repentance. Just like Nineveh. Where are the Jonas today? That'll lift up their voice like a trumpet. Lift up their voice and, and tell the people the danger, the imminent danger. The only warning that was ever given about Oroville was from Burma that I can see on the internet, on YouTube. This uh, guy, his name's Dave from Oroville that studies these things. And he's in Burma, and he's giving warning to us in the United States. And I put up his, his video on YouTube. He was giving warning days before our own engineers, before our own, uh, whatever you want to call them, before they were even saying anything about an evacuation. This man, Dave, was already waving his arms. And and literally, he's got a video where he sends a video on YouTube from Burma. Basically, almost waving his arms, warning people, days before the evacuation even began, get out of there, leave there. This is not good. He's, he was talking about the neglect and the incompetence of the California government. So is America a breach ready to fall? Is the swelling thereof going to reach other nations? You know, every single thing that happens in this world is for a reason. Everything. And the biggest reason, the end game, the at the end of the day, it all comes down to this. Repent. That's what it comes down to. Turn to the living God. Turn, people. Repent. Serve the living God. That's what it's all about. That's what every single word in the Bible is for. At the end, at the end of every word been given by Jesus, every healing, every deliverance, every single move, everything Jesus did, at the end, it all comes down to this. Repent and follow Jesus. And all the words that every preacher on the planet's ever preached, at the end, it's about repentance. Even those that have been saved for years and years, it's still about repentance because we're turning more and more to God. Amen? We began to turn to the Lord when we first got saved. But we keep turning until we see him face to face, amen? Like Abraham. Become a friend of God. And then God says to us, shall I hide this thing which I do from Abraham? 
Nothing would be hid from us, brothers and sisters. And then we could give people warning. Now, this guy, Dave, does not profess to be a Christian, a believer, contrary to that. And he was giving warning from Burma. What, you know, where's God's people? Shouldn't you and I be on our watchtower? Shouldn't we be watching and praying? And I'm talking to myself. Well, just like Dave in Burma, I told my wife several days ago, before they even mentioned the evacuation, I told my wife the same thing Dave was saying. It's worse than they say it is. I told her. Just look at the weight of the, of, of the situation. Why is it that man loves to play things down? It's not as bad as you think it is. I don't know why they do that. Why they don't want to assess the damage as bad as it really is. And then they scramble like they are right now. They're scrambling to fix this breach. Is a little repair job, a little band-aid going to fix this problem? I don't believe so. Ten days before this happened, they went up there and they were trying to pour cement. Ten days. Do you really think that that wall that they built up there to protect, keep the water back, had time to set up? and, And even if it did, Do you think sandbags is going to stop trillions of gallons of water that is coming down into that lake, into that basin from the mountains? It all comes down to one thing. Are you ready to meet God? Are you really ready? Are you awake? Are you ready? No matter where you are, no matter what you're doing, do you know you're ready to meet God? Because you don't know when and where your time will be up. If you have found Overcoming the Dragon Ministry to be a source of strength and help to your spiritual walk in these trying times, why not show your support today? Just $1 a month from each of our listeners will help with operating costs and keep us on the air. The Prince of Darkness is bringing his full wrath in these last days, and Overcoming the Dragon Ministry stands ready to defend the gospel and overcome his lies with the Sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Brother Skinner relentlessly marches forward through enemy lines, tearing down Satan's strongholds and setting the captives free. Your investment in this ministry, large or small, will be rewarded in this life and the life to come. God bless you.